Hi, I'm Tara from Smart Deploy, and this is Smart Tech Tips. Today, we're going to talk about uh, the dreaded user migration. I know you guys have all been there. I've been there. There is like no perfect way to do it, but I'm going to show you a couple good ways. Let's dive in. In Smart Deploy, we leverage Microsoft's user state migration tool, USMT for short. It has been around forever. It supposedly transfers all user data. And I say supposedly because uh, I'm always skeptical. That's just me as a person. Before you start using it, read Microsoft's documentation and do some testing. Just find out. Don't go out and re-image the CEO's laptop and trust it, okay? I want to give you a couple scenarios where you're going to migrate user data and maybe which tool you're going to use, okay? Because maybe USMT isn't the best tool for every scenario. So let's jump into Smart Deploy and we'll talk about it. You can do it per machine. So let's go to Computer Management tab and let's go into Eddy. So I'm gonna click into Eddy and you'll see right here at the top, I can hit capture user state. So this is by device and I'm gonna choose local network because Eddy's here in the building. And if I hit next, here are my user data migration settings. So I'm gonna leave user settings and we already talked about this. I'm never gonna migrate application settings. That's just my personal preference. Uh, I have found in my career that corruption loves to hide in application settings. So personally, I'm gonna leave that unchecked. I'm gonna leave documents. Um, this one's key. So migrate active users, users who've logged in the last, I'm pretty aggressive. I'm gonna say seven days because I want a fresh start. If I'm taking a machine from 10 to 11, I don't want a bunch of crap to come with me. So I'm gonna leave this at 17, but guess what? You can change it to whatever you want. Say you're not as aggressive, maybe 14. You can put it at 30, whatever you want. Then I can say, I wanna check free space, allow the user to defer the capture. I don't wanna check that because I don't wanna tell them what I'm doing. Okay, location of migration store. This is where it's gonna save the user state. It's gonna save it in a .mig form. It binds it up into one little piece, one little file. The problem with it is you can't piece it apart, but it is what it is, okay? It's the tool. Then we're gonna hit next. We're just going to come right here. So this is, this is handy. Deploy the migration file after capture. So if I click this, and I'm taking it from Eddie, I can put it right back on Eddie. Or, I love this, maybe I wanna put it on Dustin. And you might say, Tara, why would I do that? That's dumb. Okay, what if Jake comes in and says, Tara, oh my gosh, I left my computer home. And I absolutely, I need all my stuff. I need it, I have to have it. Okay, well, if I have my cloud migration set up and I have my pro license, I can take it from his home computer, his user state, and I can put it on a loaner laptop that happens to be upstairs, and it's Dustin, and then finish, and bam, all of Jake's settings are now on Dustin. So that would be a scenario I can see doing it on one by one, that's pretty handy. So that is per machine, okay? So I'm gonna cancel out of that. Now, this is one that I really love. Say my boss comes to me and says, Tara, you've got to migrate all of our Windows 10 machines to Windows 11 and you have a week to do it. I'm like, oh yay, oh my gosh, I love to do that. Please let me do it sooner. I want to do it at night because I don't want the users near me talking to me. So, and I don't want to work at night. So how am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to come back to computer management. And remember how we talked about those dynamic groups? Well, I want to pick a bunch at a time. I want to do 50 at once, maybe. I'm not here in the building at midnight. I don't really care if my bandwidth is tacked, so I'm gonna pick a bunch. So I've just selected all my high school computers. Now, I'm gonna take action on all those computers at once, but we're gonna put a pause button, okay? So remember that scenario. We're here, it's midnight, but we're not really here because we're gonna schedule it. First things first, though. We're gonna come back and first make an answer file. So let's edit this one that I just happened to make that I called high school, right? So let's edit our answer file for high school. Uh, we're gonna hit next. Uh, we're gonna do local network because we're gonna leave our computers here. Although I could do cloud 
storage provider one too because there is going to be someone who's going to tell you i have to have it at home i need it i have a, a big thing i need to work on so you could make another answer file and do a deployment for just that one person because they're just that important so keep that in mind so i'm gonna hit next uh credential time i'm gonna skip this actually sorry go back so remember i said windows 10 to 11 so this image is a windows 11 image so make sure you get the right image on there I'm gonna hit next, my platform packs. These are all my high school applications that they need. I'm gonna skip that. Here we are, user data migration. So again, user settings. This is where I'm gonna set it as part of the imaging process. The same thing we looked at on a per computer basis now as part of our image. I'm not gonna check applications because I already told you how I feel about that. Um, and I'm gonna change this again to seven because I like to be aggressive. Okay, we're gonna talk about this. If I check this first one, this is going to store it on a network share. So say my file server. I want to put out my file server and then temporarily store it here and deploy it to the endpoint. But I'm actually going to pick the second one. And what the second one does is it's going to temporarily put the user's data on their own endpoint. And then part of the re-imaging process is going to go, oh, that's right. I put user stuff right here. I'm going to go take it. And then when I put my image on, I'm going to redeploy the user user state or user data, pardon. So think of it as like a um, partition, temporary partition. That's the best way for me to put it. So this one is the more efficient way to do it. If I hit browse right here and I go to the root of the C, I've already made, made a user temp folder, but in fact, you can hit new folder and call it whatever you want. That's the name of the folder that it's going to create on every endpoint as part of the imaging process. So just remember that it gives you two options, okay? So again, we're gonna next our way to victory. The rest of these don't really matter. Just, just keep hitting next and then you're done. I'm gonna cancel out though. We're not quite done though, one more step. So after we made the answer file, we're gonna come back over to deployment package. And now I need to create a deployment package if we're gonna do this imaging in mass. So I made one for high school overnight because remember we're gonna schedule this when we're not here because we don't wanna work at night. So let's click next. We're just going to quickly go over this. Um, this is a deployment package. I'm going to hit next. Uh, pretend like I picked all the right platform packs that I need. Now, this is the crucial part. You see that high school answer file? That's the one we want. We're going to hit next, next, next. Deployment package, high school overnight. That's all I care about here. So next you're ready to victory. I'm going to cancel out. OK, we made our answer file. We attach it to a deployment package. So now we're gonna go back to computer management. Remember I told you to hold tight. We've selected all the computers. We're going to now come up here and hit image under deploy. We're gonna use our local network and we're gonna hit next. See our deployment package, high school overnight. Yes, uh, we're not gonna let the users defer deployment, but we are going to schedule it. So let's schedule it. Oh my gosh, yes. Let's schedule it for Friday the 13th. Nothing bad can possibly happen. I love it. Okay, come down here. Uh, let's do 11 p.m. So now we're telling it, push this image out with our answer file, with our deployment package, Friday the 13th at 11 p.m. Next, credential time and hit finish. I'm not going to though, because we're not gonna re-image it. So pretty slick, right? I don't even need to be here. Test it though, before you start this, do some testing. Um, now pretend like that's not a great scenario for you and your environment. I'm gonna show you one more uh, and it's OneDrive. So if I come down here, uh, this is a per user or per computer way. If I click, click up here to settings, uh, I can just decide which folders I wanna sync by coming here, choose folders, sync, okay? I'm just gonna pick, come down, I have everything synced up. So if my computer blows up, I don't care. This is all in the cloud. I can do that same thing in mass in Azure by making a conditional access policy and just apply it to the entire tenant. So there's always multiple ways to do everything. You just need to choose which one is right for your environment. Hopefully that's helpful. Uh, go out and try a couple of these and let me know how you do. That's all for today. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm Tara from Smart Deploy.